Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here. Practicing to take GRE, General Test, the 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You need it. One needs it in order to get ready for the exam. It has seven exams. Excellent source to practice for the real exam. Do not waste your time and your money buying the fake exams that are there on the market. Uh, it, 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 it makes no sense. Why the hell should uh, one buy a fake exam when one is uh, one can easily access the real one? Right here. This book has seven real exams. Don't buy any other, other stuff. Of course, I cannot name any names, but don't buy anything else. In my opinion, the best, the best thing is to have the real thing. Let's take a look at number uh, problem that I'm about to solve, which is on page number 136. Quantitative comparison number 15. Quantitative comparison number 15. There are 15 problems in this set. This is the very last one, number 15, and therefore it is supposed to be the hardest question in this set. Only 41% of the people got it right. About three-fifths of the people, about 60% about of people who took the exam got this question wrong. Let's see what it says. X. Lost it. X. Y and Z are negative integers. Negative integers. Integers means they have to be whole numbers and they have to be negative. That's the condition we have to keep in mind. And basically we are, we are asked to compare the product of x, y and z, x times y times z, and the sum of x, y and z. The best way and the simplest way and the quickest way to take, tackle this problem is to just plug in numbers. Just plug in any one number that you want. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to plug in numbers. Let's, let's, try, let's start out with negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3 to start out with. Negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 3 because they're being multiplied. Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And here we have negative 1 negative 2, negative 3, which is going to give me, oh, which is also going to give me 6. Oh, what do you know? Spooky. So, so far the answer is C. There we go, the answer is C. Is it? No, it's not. Not necessarily so. It may turn out to be C, but so far I do not know, which is why 60% of the people got this question wrong. Why the majority of the people get quant quant questions. These are also referred to when one is being when one is being lazy, when one is being lazy, the quantitative comparison questions are sometimes referred to as quant comp. The reason why people have trouble in the quant comp problems is because they do half the work. This is not enough. What is it that we have determined so far? Have we determined that the answer is C? No, this does not tell me what the answer is. It only tells me what the answer is not. And let me explain what I mean by that. There are four possible answers. What is it that you're claiming when you pick A for the answer choice in these problems? What we're claiming is that the quantity in column A is, and here's the keyword, is always greater. And now I know that the A is not the right answer. Why? Because I found one instance when they are equal. If I find one instance where these two quantities are equal, it rules out it rules out the assertion that the quantity in column A is always greater. It cannot be always greater because I showed, just showed you where it was not. It also rules out B. Because had I picked B, what I would have been claiming is that the quantity in column B is, again, always greater. Wait, quantity in column B cannot be always greater because I just told, found an instance where it is not. It rules out B. So based on the work that I have done so far, what I have found, I have not found what the answer is. What I found is what the answer is not. Answer is not A and it's not B. It's either C or a D, and which is what I have to confirm one more time by plugging in one more time. And the second time around when you plug in, you have to be a little bit creative. You have to be funky. And watch my previous clips that I've done in the quant comps, and you will find there are two instances that, that I already covered, so I'm not going to go over a third time. Go through the clips and you will find it where I talk about two flavors of numbers. The nice numbers and nasty numbers. Nice numbers 
and nasty numbers, which are 0, 1, negatives, and fractions. I don't know how far down you can read in the camera, and if you can, I'm sorry about that. I should have put it a little bit higher. And nice numbers are just any whole positive number. Well, we cannot plug in zero because they have to be negative integers. We cannot plug, well, so I'm going to try one. I'm going to try negative one, see what happens. Let's plug in negative one. So I'm going to do it one more time. So here's my x times y times z. Here's my x plus y plus z. And if the answer stays the same, then we'll see. If the answer changes, then we'll see. So let's do one more time. So this time I'm going to do negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Why negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1? Because there is nothing in the problem that says that they have to be different, which is what you're trying to do here. You want to think outside the box. You want to, you want to think creatively. This is a very funky situation. This is a very kinky situation or funky, whatever you prefer, to each whatever one stays this. So negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And here it would be negative 1 times minus negative, negative 1 would be negative 3. Which one is bigger, negative 1 or negative 3? Of course negative 1 is bigger. Answer has, it doesn't, actually in, in, in our case it doesn't matter which one is bigger. Only thing that matters to us is that they are different numbers. If they are different numbers, it rules out C. The answer here turns out to be A. Before the answer was C, the answer changed. Answer cannot change. Since the answer is changing, that tells me it cannot be determined. We cannot tell which one it is. The answer is D here. Let me quickly look at the camera, see how long I have taken so far. I am seven minutes into it, so I'm going to quickly go over one more time about the two, two flavors of numbers. I was, I was trying to put it a little bit higher. Let's put them here. Well, I'm going to leave it up to you to, to go through the clips and, and, and find them again because I'm going to probably, it will probably crop up again one more time. Just one second, I want to see how quick, how, how low I can see in the camera there, I forgot. Anyway, that was it. I hope you found this helpful. If you wish to hire me for personal private tutoring or if you wish to buy the solution manuals to any of the problems in this book, uh, you can communicate with me through email. Go to my website at www.prep, P-R-E-P, prep, F-O-R-4, G-R-E.com. Prep for G-R-E.com. Go down there and send me an email or, of course, you will find my phone number there as well and so forth and we'll talk. All right. Thank you.